Well, it's 12 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, let's see. All right, good. That's syncing up. Okay. Excellent. All right. So we last time finished talking about the chain rule, right? We went through quite a few examples. We did some product chain rule. We did some quotient rule chain rule. Um, we also did um, some like layered chain rule where we had multiple layers we had to do chain rule with. And we also talked about log rules, which, which is always really fun. Well, now we're going to get into something related, um, related and different at the same time. So we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. Here's the idea with implicit differentiation. This is a circle. I think that none of you will argue me on that, that this is a circle. And the equation of a circle, if you remember the equation of a circle, it's x minus, oops, that's rather big. Let me fix that. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, where the center is at h comma k, and the radius is r. That was the equation of a circle. So this circle right here is centered at 0, 0. Here's the center right here. So it's h comma k. It's h and k values are going to be 0, 0. So it becomes x squared plus y squared. And you can see its radius is 5. So 25 comes from that r squared. So anyways, this is the equation of a circle is what I'm getting at. Here's a circle. And, and that's great. But this, this is not something that we can, we can find tangent lines for as easily. So if we looked at this, if we looked at the circle and we said, hey, let's take the point 3, negative 4, right down here. And we wanted to find the tangent line there. If we want to find this tangent line. It's going to be a little harder because what we're used to is seeing something like y equals blah, and then we take a derivative, right? And that derivative gives, gives us an equation that we can then plug an x value into and get the slope of the tangent line. But, but that's not how this looks. This x squared plus y squared equals 25 is, is not in the form y equals something. So, you know, sometimes there's workarounds to this, right? So we, we, can, we can work around this a little bit. Um, so one way would be we could solve for y. So our original equation is x squared plus y squared equals 25. So we could subtract x squared on both sides, and we get x, y squared is equal to 25 minus x squared. And then we could take the square root on both sides, remembering to put a plus or minus there, the square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, I mean, that kind of works, right? It's not a pretty equation. Let me just kind of move that a little. It's not a pretty function. Um, it's actually not a function at all because a function would need to pass that vertical line test. Um, it's two different functions, but we, we can use this. Um, so there's two equations we're getting, two functions. We're getting y equals positive square root of 25 minus x squared. And we're getting y equals negative square root of 25 minus x squared. The positive version is where the y values are positive. So that positive one covers this part of the circle. The negative one covers the negative y values. So it's covering that bottom part of the circle. Since the point that we're looking at to find this tangent line is in quadrant four, so it's asking here, since our point is in quadrant four, we want to be using this bottom function, which covers the y values below um, the, the negative y values, the bottom half of the circle. So we're going to use the function y equals negative square root of 25 minus x squared. And, and now we can do it, right? We're good. We have a y equals, so we are good to just work through this thing. 
first we're going to rewrite it with exponents. So we're going to get rid of the radical, write it as an exponent. So we have 25 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. And now we're going to take a derivative because we want to find the slope of the tangent line, which is going to require um, finding the derivative first. So, all right, we have an outside function and inside function. So this whole thing out here is the outside. This guy in here is going to be the inside. So if you're looking at negative, I don't care, raised to the one half power, when you take that derivative, just power rule, right? Bring this guy down front, subtract one from the exponent. So it should look something like negative one half, I don't care, raised to the negative one half power, because one half minus one is negative one half. So negative one half, that's the exponent coming down, leave the inside the same, raised to the negative one half power, and now the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 25 minus x squared, that's just gonna be negative two x. For a line, we need to have an x value, which we were given, right? We were given three. We need to have a y value, which we were given, that's negative four. And we need a slope, which is the m value. The m value is coming from plugging our x value, three, into that derivative. The x value gets plugged into the derivative to give us the slope of the tangent line. So plugging three in there. Um, you could do this by hand. That, that's an option. Um, I would suggest using your calculator on this one. Just, you know, a little faster here. Um, but you are more than welcome to do this by hand. It's always good practice to do fraction stuff by hand. All right. So if you plug it into your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.75 as the m value. We now have all the information that we need to find that tangent line. So remembering point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y and then minus negative 4, so plus 4 is equal to 0 0.75 x minus 3. distributing that 0.75 minus 2.25, and then subtracting four on both sides, we get 0.75x minus 6.25. So we did it, we, we did it. Um, can I answer any questions about this, this problem at all? This is really just what we've done before. There's really not anything new here that I've done besides I had to do a little bit of extra work at the very beginning. Um, but besides that, same process. Can we leave it as a fraction? Oh, yeah. So if you wanted to put 0.75 as a three-fourths, is that what you're asking? Yes, absolutely. In fact, oftentimes I would, I would suggest leaving it as a fraction. Um, because the decimal truncated, because it, it, it stops after two decimals, I was okay leaving it as a decimal, but most of the time I'd prefer it as a uh, fraction anyway, so absolutely. Other questions? Okay. If you have them, feel free to keep typing them. Once again, you can always send them to me in a private message if you don't want to type, uh, type it to the entire class. So that, that, that worked, and we lucked out because we were actually able to solve for y. But there are equations 
where you're not going to be able to solve for y. For instance, look at this guy here or this guy here. Um, x squared plus ln y minus e to the x sine y equals the square root of x plus y to the seventh. Good luck trying to solve for y there. Uh, it won't happen. And it, so there's no way for us to get y equals something and then take the derivative. There just isn't a way. But, you know, we can still use these equations to create graphs and we can still draw tangent lines on these graphs. So it would make sense that there has to be a way that we could find derivatives for these graphs, even though they're not explicit functions. So when I say explicit, an explicit function, oops, an explicit function is like y equals blah. Explicitly, here is the here is um, a a function. Y is a function of x. It um, so y is explicitly defined, whereas an implicit function is going to be like one of these guys here. I'll write it down here because it's going to take up more room. I'll just truncate it. Uh, let's just call it y squared. Doesn't matter. Either way, it's not y equals something is the big thing there. Um, it's we can assume that maybe y could be, there's some way in which y, it could be a y equals, but it's not explicitly y equals. So we say that y is implicitly a function of x in this case, because it's not explicit. It's not y equals and then a function of x. So in this implicit case, we use something called implicit differentiation, which is going to involve using chain rule in a creative way and a, a more abstract way. So hang on while we go through this. All right, we're gonna go through this in an example. We have this equation up here, where it's an implicit function. Y is implicitly a function of x. It's y cubed plus y squared minus x squared equals 5y minus 4. And we want to find dy dx. We want to find the derivative. So it doesn't explicitly say that. Why don't I just write that here? Find dy dx. Okay, so here's the idea. Remember with chain rule, chain rule, it was the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So here's kind of the idea. We don't know what the derivative of the inside is. Um, when we say derivative of the outside, if I have y squared, the derivative of the outside then would become 2y, right? Like if I had x plus 7 quantity squared and I took I was doing chain rule. The outside part of that would be 2 x plus 7 raised to the first power. And then you would have the derivative of the inside would go here. So in the case of y squared, or in the case of y, we, y is the entire function. We can take its derivative as if we're just talking about, let me go back here, a blank spot. I could put a y in here. Right? We can take the derivative of y as if it is the outside function. And then for the derivative of the inside, we don't know this because we don't know what y equals. y equals something, but we don't know. We don't know this. But what we do know is the derivative of y 
is dy dx. I don't know what dy dx is, that's what I'm trying to find, but I do know that y has a derivative and that derivative would be dy dx. Right, so let me, one more time. When we're doing this, y is a function of x, but we don't know what it is. We don't know what y equals. So when we go to take a derivative where we have powers of y, we're going to treat y like it is a chain rule problem. Like instead of this being y cubed plus y squared, you could treat it like it was like box cubed plus box squared minus x squared equals five box minus four. Where with each of these, if we didn't know what was on the inside, the way that with chain rule worked, you just treat the outside like normal and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to actually erase this so that I can have a bit of room here. So we don't know the inside. And what we, we do know is that if we took the derivative of y, you would get dy dx. So here's how it works. We take the derivative of y as if it were an x, right? Just like here, y squared becomes 2y, as if it were x. And then if we're taking a derivative of y, we put a dy dx after it to account for chain rule. All right, so how does that look? Well, here's our original equation. Oops, that's not my pointer. Here's my original equation, right? For y cubed, three y squared, right? I've taken the derivative of y cubed as if it were an x, but now because y is a function of x, we put a dy dx after it. We're multiplying by dy dx. Let me put that in red. Next, y squared, taking the derivative like it were an x, would become 2y, but because I took a derivative of a y, I'm putting a dy dx minus. Now, x squared is not a function of y, right? x squared is just our variable, so we're just going to treat x the way that we've always treated x. It'll become 2x, and that's it. No dy dx because we don't need to do chain rule on our x's. equals the derivative of 5y would be 5, right? If it, were an, if it were 5x, it would be 5. But because it's a y, we put on a dy dx. And then the derivative of 4 would be 0, so plus 0. So that's your first step. Your first step is you differentiate the entire equation and then the only thing you're doing different, so you're going to have two variables involved, one y, one is going to be x. And later on, when we get to related rates, we'll start using other variables. But for now, y's and x's. And if you take, if you take a derivative of something that has y, you're putting a dy dx after it. That's the only new rule. There's two variables, and the y variable just gets treated slightly different to account for chain rule. But this isn't dy dx equals, and I was asked right here to find dy dx, and this is not telling me what dy dx is. So now I need to get dy dx by itself. So I'm going to take the terms that have dy dx and put them on one side, and then everything else will go to the other.
So I'm just going to rewrite my original. 3y squared dy dx plus 2y dy dx minus 2x equals 5 dy dx. So this term has a dy dx in it. This term has a dy dx in it. And this term has a dy dx in it. I'm going to move those to the left side because, I don't know, I like putting, if I'm solving for something, I like to put it on the left side. So these guys are already fine. They can stay where they are, but this one will need to move over. So we'll be subtracting him. And then this guy has no dy dx in him, so I'm putting him on the right side. So essentially what it ends up looking like is dy dx terms equal not dy dx terms. So I have 3y squared dy dx, that stays, plus 2y dy dx. Now I'll be moving him over, I'll be adding 2x to both sides, so he won't be here, and I'll be subtracting 5 dy dx from both sides. So I have minus 5 dy dx equals positive 2x. We're almost there at this point. So the next step is getting all is factoring out this dy dx because everything has a dy dx in it on the left side by, by design. We did that on purpose. So we can factor that dy dx out on the left side. We'd be left with 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 is equal to 2x. And then to get dy dx by itself, so that we have dy dx equals, we can just divide both sides by this leftover stuff here. So that would cancel these guys out and leave you with dy dx is equal to 2x over 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And that would be your derivative. Your derivative will have y's in it. So kind of scrolling out to look at this process again. The big new thing is that with y's, when you take a derivative of a y, that you're adding a dy dx afterwards to account for chain rule. Once you've done that, you then want to collect all the dy dx terms on one side so that you're able to factor it out and solve for dy dx. And that's how we... we we solve this. That's how we do implicit differentiation. Now, there's a question that oftentimes comes up when, when, when I start a section like this. Um, and, and that question is, well, dy dx is the same thing as y prime. So can I use y prime instead? The answer is yes, they are the same thing. And you absolutely could use y prime instead of using dy dx. However, it starts to get a little messy looking if you do this, and it's really easy to start misinterpreting your handwriting and things go bad really quickly. And I've, I've taught enough calculus and seen enough students do this to, to caution you against doing it. Yes, it is faster. You could absolutely take this line right here. Let me just use like pink or something, yeah. You could do this and you could do 3y squared y prime plus 2y y prime minus 2x equals 5y prime. You can, but 
Can you see how maybe you might misinterpret those Y primes as um, Y to the first powers or maybe just not recognize it as being different? Can you see how they look similar to one another? The Ys and the Y primes look very similar. It's totally valid to do it that way, <laughs> but I will caution everybody against it. Uh, first of all, it makes grading a lot worse because sometimes those primes get covered up and stuff and it gets harder to grade uh, and it makes it harder on you. I know it's a little extra effort, but I think the extra effort is really, really worth it in the case of implicit differentiation. Um, so anyways, it's something I like to point out, like, yes, you can use Y prime. Yes, Y prime and DY DX are the same thing. However, it just, it's not, it, it, it's not as great visually. So, th so that's it. That's all I have to say there. Um, all the other rules that we've talked about, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, all of those are still going to apply here. The only new rule we have is that if you take a derivative of a y, that you put the dy dx after it, which accounts for a chain rule. This is something that has to be practiced. Um, a lot like chain rule, when I said chain rule is one of those things where you absolutely have to practice it. You are not going to get good at chain rule by watching someone do it. You're not going to get good at chain rule by uh, thinking about chain rule. Uh, you have to practice chain rule to get good at chain rule. It's the same way with implicit differentiation. Uh, it is an algorithmic process. However, you have to practice it to get good at it. Um, so I really, really encourage just practicing these problems. There's the problems at the end of this section, and there's also problems at um, in that free textbook that I posted online. So you could check either of those out for problems to practice. So we're going to redo that first example. Um, remember that the answer we got for the first example was that um, there was a tangent line to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3, negative 4. And that tangent line was 0.75x minus 6.25. We're going to redo that, but we're going to use implicit differentiation. All right, so we have x squared plus y squared equals 25. Remember, when we take a derivative of x, we don't need to worry about putting a dy dx. But if we take a derivative of y, we do. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared will be 2y dy dx. And then the derivative of 25 is going to be 0. Right. So we want to solve for dy dx. I'm going to move the 2x over. I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So I get 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x. Then to get dy dx by itself, I'm dividing by 2y. So those twos will cancel and I get negative x over y. Questions on that derivative at all? before I move into the rest of like, there's, we're gonna find that tangent line again, but questions on that derivative. So then we want to find the slope of the tangent line, right? For our line, we need an x1, which we have, a y1, which we also have, and we need m, which is taking this derivative and evaluating it at this point. So we have dy dx, and we are evaluating it. So we have that up and down line that we'll use at the point. See, so you could do this in one of two ways. You could say x equals... 3y equals negative 4. Um, you, you, could, you could just put the point here like this. It doesn't matter notation-wise. 
I'm going to just go ahead and keep it with the evaluation line and then x equals 3, y equals negative 4, because there are x's and y's we have to plug in. So we have negative x is 3, y is negative 4, and the negatives cancel, and you get positive 3 fourths, which is 0 0.75, right? That's the same slope we got before. with significantly less work, might I add. Right. Um, so I'll just write it as 0 0.75 because that's what we did before. y plus 4 is equal to 0 0.75 times x minus 3. This is the exact same thing we had before, so it's going to come out to be the same thing, 0 0.75x minus 6.25. Questions on that example at all? Okay. Before we get into doing maybe some more complicated examples, well, let's see. Yeah, before we get into the, the um, A and B, I'm going to really quick give you two to try out just to see how you're feeling about this. So I'm going to make some up. Let's see. Let's do negative 7, y plus 10. So find dy dx for that guy. And then I'll make up another one down here too. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, let's say, I'm going to put a four minute timer on and uh, pause myself and come back in four minutes and see how we did there. Okay, so my timer just went off. You may not be finished with both of them, but hopefully you're done with the first one. Um, and so let's, let's work on that first one. All right, so derivative of x, we're just going to treat normally. So derivative of sine x is cosine x plus power rule here, right? 4 times 5 is 20. So 20y cubed, but we took a derivative of y, so we're putting a dy dx in minus 3x squared. No dy dx because it, it was an x. Minus the derivative of seven, negative 7y seven would be negative 7 but then it's a y, so we put a dy dx, and the derivative of 10 would be 0. I'm going to put the dy dx terms on the left side, so he will stay, he will move, and then if it doesn't have a dy dx, I'm going to move it to the right side. So 20y cubed dy dx will stay, and then I'm adding 7 dy dx to the other side, so plus 7 dy dx equals, um, 
I'm going to do this guy first since he'll be positive and this one will be negative when it moves over. So I'll do 3x squared minus cosine x. Factoring out a dy dx, because we have dy dx is on the left, we have 20y cubed plus 7 is equal to 3x squared minus cosine x. And then dividing by 20y cubed plus 7. And, and I want to be really clear here about the, the canceling that happens. Um, we don't do this. Um, I, I've seen some of this kind of happening on homework. That's not how the canceling um, works. You can't cancel if you have a plus b over uh, a plus b. It's not that the a's cancel and then the b's cancel. It's that the entire a term a plus b cancels with the entire term a plus b. So just, just a comment that this whole thing cancels with this whole thing. It's not that they individually cancel. They can't individually cancel. Um, it's just that the whole thing is canceling. So we'll get dy dx is equal to 3x squared co uh, minus cosine x all over 20y cubed plus 7. How did that first one go? Was that one okay? Good? I hear, okay, good, good. Excellent. I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit so that <laughs> we have a little bit more space for part B. All right, so next, um, derivative of ln x is one over x. Derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. We do not need to worry about dy dx's because those are just x's. Um, this term right here is actually 8y to the 1 half power. So 1 half times 8 would be 4. So minus 4y, 1 half minus 1 will be negative 1 half. Um, and then, ha, 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 don't write your equals yet. See, you got to catch yourself on this sometimes. It's easy to miss it. Um, I took a derivative of y, so I'm putting a dy dx. It's the mistake you're going to make. It's going to happen a few times. If it just happened to me now, like I just, I just wrote an equal sign instead of putting the dy dx there. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. So it's something you're going to have to constantly be looking for and correcting yourself on because it is an easy mistake to make. All right, so I took a derivative of y, so I'm doing dy dx, and now I'm, not, I'm taking another derivative of y, bring down the exponent, 5 ninths, y raised to be 5 ninths minus 1, remember our trick, so if you're subtracting 1, you're subtracting, it's 5 minus the denominator, so 5 minus 9 is negative 4, negative 4 over 9, and then dy dx. Um, oops, this guy will stay because he's already on the left. This guy will move to the left. Anything without a dy dx in it is going to go on the right. So we have negative 4y to the negative 1 half dy dx. Because I'm leaving him there. I'm subtracting this guy, so minus 5 ninths y to the negative 4 ninths dy dx is equal to subtracting both of these guys from the right hand side. So minus 1 over x minus secant squared x. Pull out the dy dx on the left. So negative 4y to the negative 1 half minus 5 ninths y to the negative 4 ninths. 
is equal to negative 1 over x minus secant squared x. And then dividing the whole thing on both sides by that negative 4y raised to the negative 1 half minus 5 ninths y raised to the negative 1, 4 ninths both sides. And that'll give us a final answer of dy dx is equal to negative 1 over x minus secant squared x, negative 4y to the negative 1 half minus 5 ninths y to the negative 4 ninths. Ta-da! A few things here. There's some simplification that could be done. Um, and I'm not sure how the free textbook that I posted online works, um, but the guided lecture notes, the answers in them sometimes simplify it um, a little bit, typically not too much, um, and they sometimes don't. So if you get a different answer, try doing a bit of simplification to see if they do come out to be the same. Um, for instance, in this guy right here, um, because everything is negative, you could also make everything positive because you could factor a negative out on the top and the bottom and they would cancel. You could multiply by x to get rid of the complex fraction. So you can multiply by x in numerator and denominator. I don't care about you simplifying. I'm honestly fine with you just leaving it in this form. It's a lot easier for me to grade. But it's something that I, I like to make you aware of because if you're trying to compare your answers to those in the guided lecture notes or those in the textbook that I posted, um, they might be slightly different and it might be because there's simplification. But are there any questions on this answer here? Okay, I don't see any questions there. So I'll uh, pull it up to here. And now we're not gonna go too crazy, but we're gonna do things that aren't power rule now. Let's try using the same process, but in something that doesn't, when the Y's don't necessarily just have power rule. All right, so taking this derivative here. Remember with the derivative of e to the whatever, when you're taking that derivative, that it's going to be, because of chain rule, the derivative of the exponent times just the original thing. So. As an example, if you have e to the 7x, this is just chain rule, right? But typically we do derivative of outside times derivative of inside. But with e, it, it makes a little more sense to have this stuff in front. So if you had e to the 7x, the derivative of 7x is 7, and then e to the 7x. So do you see how I left his exponent alone there? So the 7x would remain there. So here, the derivative of 3x would be 3. So taking this derivative, we'd have 4 would stay, and then we'd have 3 e to the 3x. And we'll combine that 4 and 3 together. Plus, no, and we don't need to worry about the um, dy dx on that because it was just x's, plus derivative of, y, of ln y will be 1 over y. And because we took a derivative of y, we're going to put a dy dx in there. Equals 5y to the fourth, and that's a derivative of y, so we're putting a dy dx. 
So just a simplification here, 12 e to the 3x plus 1 over y dy dx equals 5y to the 4th dy dx. Now we've got to get our dy dx's on the same side. So once again, I'm going to leave my dy dx over there, move him to the left. This one doesn't have a dy dx, so he is going to move to the right. So we have 1 over y dy dx is equal, uh, oops, <laughs> minus 5y to the fourth dy dx is equal to negative 12 e to the 3x. Factoring out the dy dx, we have 1 over y minus 5y to the fourth equals negative 12 e to the 3x. Now I'm not going to write that step where I divide. I'm just going to start implying it. We would divide by this whole thing here on both sides, which would give us dy dx equals negative 12 e to the 3x over 1 over y minus 5y to the fourth. No, I don't want to... <laughs> don't want to write over the problem below it. Let me just shrink it a little bit. Nope, that didn't work. Just take the whole thing and shrink it. There we go. And that would be that derivative. So really with the ln y, it's really no different than when you're doing power rule with y. It's it, The derivatives of y end up being, it's just the same as x. It's just you're tacking on a dy dx at the end. Questions on that one? All right. Let's do more. All right, derivative time. So y to the 5 halves, that'll be 5 halves y, and then 5 halves minus 1 will be 3 halves. We took a derivative of y, so we'll put a dy dx. Plus, all right, things are going to get a little spicy here. So we have sine of stuff. And remember, with chain rule, we take the derivative of the outside, so it would become cosine of whatever stuff is in there, times the, the derivative of stuff. In our case, stuff is 2y plus 3. So maybe off to the side here, we could write this. Um, so it should be cosine of 2y plus 3 plus the derivative of 2y plus 3. And the derivative of 2y plus 3, just take it like you would have been taking the derivatives before. Derivative of 2y will be 2. And then because it's a y, it has a dy dx. And the derivative of 3 would be 0. So really, it's just 2 dy dx. cosine of 2y plus 3 times 2 dy dx. Right, so I'm going to write that over here. So it's cosine, derivative of the outside, 2y plus 3, then times the derivative of the inside, 2 dy dx, Just move that over a little bit. Beauties of uh, technology. Minus the derivative of 7x to the 7th will be 49x to the 6th, and the derivative of 25 is 0. We're going to be moving anything without a dy at dx to the other side, which is only him. Everything else can stay where it is because it 
We want the dydx terms on the left, and they're already on the left. And hey, if you want to move your dydx terms to the right and put your non-dydx terms on the left because you know you want to be a bit of a rebel, totally fine. Absolutely fine. You can absolutely be that rebel, and um, I, I encourage you to do what your heart tells you to do with these. All right? Do what your heart tells you. As long as it's mathematically sound, do what your heart tells you. All right, so I now have five halves, y to the three halves, dy dx, plus cosine, 2y plus 3. You know what? I'm just going to take this 2 and bring it out front because why not? Um, because it's all multiplied so you can move it around. It's squishy. Is equal to 49x to the 6th. Factor the dy dx out. So we have 5 halves, y to the 3 halves, plus 2, cosine 2y plus 3. Is equal to 49x to the sixth. Then we're just dividing by all this stuff here. So we have dy dx is equal to 49x to the sixth over 5 halves, y to the 3 halves plus 2 cosine 2y plus 3. So here's the thing about these, like there's a lot of writing, especially because the dy dx takes a little bit, you know, it's a more, more pen strokes, I understand. But when you look at it, it makes you, you have to feel kind of smart when you're doing it, right? Like look at all the symbols and stuff. Like this is something you could bring to a party and impress your friends with and be like, look at this math I'm doing. Cause like this, this looks impressive, right? So even though it may give you a little bit of carpal tunnel, it's worth it because you get to look at it and be like, wow, that looks so impressive very calculus -y. Or maybe maybe it's just me that feels like it looks impressive and calculus -y. Can I answer any questions on any of the problems we've done on this page here? Right? It feels good. It feels it, it feels good to just, you know, write out a bunch of math and it's one of the nice things about math is you can look at it and be like, yes, smart. All right. If there's no questions on this page, I will move to the next page. Um, and if you're keeping track of the calendar, by the way, we are a tiny bit behind schedule. I, I don't know. We're going to make it work. Um, I think I'm going to cut some stuff out of the next section because it's uh, there's some stuff that can be cut from the next section. Don't worry, we're a little bit behind schedule. I'll probably be making an announcement later this week about the changes I'll be making um, to the schedule to make sure that you have all the information you need for each of the tests. Right now we are scheduled to have test or exam two next week. I, we'll just see how it goes. I, I may push that back a little bit. Look for an announcement from me. Because this time, this stuff does take a little bit of practice. All right. Example 2.5.3, find dy dx in the following equations. Here's where stuff gets a little bit more spicy. Um, we got some stuff going on. You got an x squared y. The thing about x squared y is that there is actually multiplication happening in there. x squared is being multiplied by y. And when we multiply two things together and then we take derivatives, we end up using da 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 product rule. All right? So if you have a situation where there's x's being multiplied with y's, that is a situation where you're going to need to use product rule. So I'll treat, the, I'll treat these both differently. So I have my F and my G. And remember, product rule, F prime G plus G prime F. 
So my f is x squared. My f prime is 2x. My g is y. And then the derivative of y is dy dx. For my next one, for my next trick, f is x, f prime is 1, g is y squared, and g prime is 2y dy dx. It's really important, I think, with the implicit differentiation that you do really write this out um, because sometimes the dy dx is just kind of get flung in um, willy nilly. So it's, it's important to make sure that the dy dx's are in the places they need to be. And the easiest way to do that is going to be separating it down to its components and then individually taking those derivatives. All right, so derivative wise, the derivative of x squared y, so f prime g, so 2x, maybe I'll put parentheses so you can see where each piece is, 2x times y, so that's f prime g plus g prime f plus dy dx times x squared plus derivative of xy squared, so f prime g, so that's 1 times y squared plus g prime f, so 2y dy dx times f, which is x, equals, and then the derivative of negative 2 will be 0. Let us clean that up a little bit, and then we will just going to scoot that up there. Let us clean it up, and um, then we'll move things around. So this is 2xy plus, I'm going to write this as x squared dy dx. I'm literally just write, rewriting things at this point. Plus 1 times y squared is just y squared. Plus, I'm going to move the x to be with the 2y. So I'm going to write it as 2xy dy dx equals 0. The dy dx terms are going to stay on the left hand side or the right, put them on the right if you want to. It doesn't matter, whichever you want to do, whatever makes your heart happy. Move the other stuff to the other side. Anything without a dy dx goes on the other side. So we have x squared dy dx plus 2xy dy dx is equal to negative 2xy minus y squared. I'm sorry that I cheat and uh, make things smaller when I know you can't necessarily do that when you're on paper. Uh, but that being said, I am going to take advantage of technology and move things around so that I can fit everything in. All right, I'm factoring the dy dx out of the bottom. I'm um, off the bottom. I'm factoring the dy dx out of the left side. So we have x squared plus 2xy equals negative 2xy minus y squared. If you divided both sides by this x squared plus 2xy, you'd have negative 2xy minus y squared over x squared plus 2xy. And that would be your final answer. Once again, I want to point out these 2xy's do not cancel. All right. Even if this was a positive 2xy, they wouldn't cancel. You can't cancel like that. You can only cancel with, with multiplication or if you're literally canceling the, in, the entire thing up here because that's 
technically kind of counts as multiplication. So if you're canceling the entire term with this entire term, if they're exactly the same, you can do that. But you can't just do it if they're if they're being added or subtracted. You can't just take this one and this one and cancel them. So be careful with your algebra because I see some of those mistakes happen at like the very end of a problem. Okay. So why don't you try out part B then, right? Very, very similar to part A, try out part B. It's going to involve one case of product rule. Hopefully you can see where it is. Um, you know, I'll put two minutes on and give you a chance to work on that. Maybe I'll put three minutes on. I'll put three minutes on. Okay. All right, so that three minute timer just went off. Hopefully you're at least most of the way through the problem. I am gonna start talking about the answer. This very first part needs product rule. So this guy's F, this guy's G, F is X, F prime is one, G is cosine Y, G prime would be derivative of cosine would be negative sine but then because there was a y involved, we'll put a dy dx on there. So my full derivative here, f prime g, so 1 times cosine y plus g prime f, so negative sine y dy dx f, uh, so g prime f times f is x now we're on the other side the derivative of y will just be dy dx derivative of ln x is 1 over x rewriting this to be a little bit more pretty we have cosine y minus, I'm going to write this as sine, let's actually do, I'm going to write this as x sine y. Typically, we move all of the, very anything, everything in front of it, the dy dx, so the dy dx is the very last part of it. Um, at least that's what I typically do. So I'm just going to move the x in front of the sine y, and because they're multiplied, I can I can do that. dy dx equals dy dx plus 1 over x. So our dy dx term will stay on this side. I'll move him over. This cosine y term, it doesn't have a dy dx, so I'll move him to the right, and this guy will stay. So we have negative x sine y dy dx minus dy dx equals 1 over x minus cosine y. Pulling out the dy dx on the left, we have negative x sine y minus, now here's, 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 Here's the part we have to be careful. If you pull a dy dx out of dy dx, you might think you're left with nothing, but you're left with one. If you pull a dy dx out of itself, you're left with one. Equals one over x minus cosine y, giving us a grand total of dy dx equals one over x minus cosine y all over negative x sine y minus one. Questions, concerns on that one?
Yeah, I'm sorry. So you may need to have a scrap piece of paper. Um, I, I am sorry. I know it's it's unfair that I can squish things down. You may need scrap paper for some of these. I do apologize about that. I may tell that to uh, the author of the notes. I'll tell him we should maybe a little more space on these ones. Uh, any other questions or though or concerns before I move to this ne next example? All right. So with this next example, we have a weird thing going on over here, which is going to require chain rule because this big thing over here is essentially stuff squared. So when we take the derivative, we'll be bringing that exponent down in front and then multiplying by so the exponent down in front, subtract one off the exponent, and then multiplying by the derivative. So just to kind of get you ready for it. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Now, once again, this whole thing is the outside part. So I, I bring down the 2, and I put 2x squared plus 2y squared minus x. I leave the inside alone. Subtracting 1 from the power, it would just become a 1. So that's the derivative of the outside. And now we're looking at the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 2x squared is 4x. The derivative of 2y squared is going to be uh, 4y dy dx. And the derivative of x is just 1. This is going to, this is going to be a little bit messy. So, no easy way to say it, but we, we got to, we got to multiply this thing out. We don't really have any choices here. Um, because there's a dy dx that's trapped in here, we have to multiply this out so that we can get that dy dx out. Um, one thing we can do, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this two into everything. Um, which will make it a little bit easier for us to deal with. Not terribly easier, but a little bit. So sometimes when multiplying something out like this, you can do it like the FOIL method where it's like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. You're just distributing it to everybody. Um, but sometimes what I like to do with this type of long multiplication, because there's going to be nine terms total, um, is do my box multiplication. So here's how my box multiplication works. I take this polynomial right here, and I'll write it up here. So 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 2x. And I'm going to make a box here. And I'll take my other polynomial. It's not quite a polynomial because it has derivatives in it, but whatever. I'll take him and I'll put each of those terms here. So 4x, 4y, dy, dx, and negative 1. And then you multiply like battleship essentially. So 4x squared times 4x is 16x cubed. 4x squared times 4y, dy, dx is going to be 16x squared y dy dx. 4x squared times negative 1 is negative 4x squared. So we're going to do this for everything. So 4x times 4y squared is 16xy squared. 
4y squared times 4y dy dx is 16y cubed dy dx. 4y squared times negative 1 is negative 4y squared. Nearly there. Negative 2x times 4x is negative 8x squared. Negative 2x times 4y dy dx will be negative 8xy dy dx. Negative 2x times negative 1 is positive 2x. Now, if you're looking for terms that can combine together, there's literally only two terms that could combine together. So this would be what you'd get written out if you multiplied this out. This is every one of the terms that you would get. Right? Each of these are a term. And if you're looking at combining together, technically the only ones that are like terms are these two right here. So you could combine together negative 4x squared minus 8x squared and get negative 12x squared. We could do that. So we could just not look at those and remember this guy has to be somewhere. But that's the only one that can combine together. Nothing else is a like term that I see. So 2x plus 2y dy dx is equal to, we're going to write out every one of these terms because that's what this thing multiplied out will be. Here it goes. Uh, 16 x cubed. I'm going to go, I think, lengthwise. And remember, I'm instead of writing these two, I'm just going to write negative 12x squared. Plus 16xy squared minus 12x squared. That's this guy right here. Plus 16 x squared y dy dx plus 16 y cubed dy dx. And we're going to make a little separation here. I'm going to move down to a second line. Minus 8xy dy dx minus 4y squared plus 2x. Oof. All right. That was only a lot of work. So kind of looking around at what we have. Um, here's something fun. Because we have 2x on both sides, we could subtract 2x on both sides and it would cancel the 2x's out so we don't have to worry about the 2x's anymore. Um, so that's a little simplification we could do. That's about it on simplification. It's time to move stuff around. dy dx terms will go to the left. Non-dy dx terms are going to stay on the right. So we get 2y dy dx minus 16x squared y dy dx minus 16y cubed dy dx plus 8xy dy dx equals 16x cubed plus 16xy squared minus 12x squared dun, 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 minus 4y squared. Uh, okay, yeah, that's everything. Oof, 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 oof. Pulling out the dy dx on the left. This is just tedious. 2y minus 16x squared y minus 16y cubed plus 8xy equals the other side, 16x cubed plus 16xy squared minus 12x squared minus 4y squared. 
And then, I mean, you can see what the, what the answer is going to look like, right? dy dx is equal to 16x cubed plus 16xy squared minus 12x squared minus 4y squared divided by all of this stuff. 2y minus 16x squared y minus 16y cubed plus 8xy. Ta-da! Now, something we could have done, something we could have done up here to, it wouldn't have made our work much easier, but we could have divided everything by two. So instead of distributing this two, we could have divided everything by two so that we had slightly smaller numbers. Because you'll notice that there's, everything has a two in it down here. So this could be simplified into um, 8x cubed plus 8xy squared minus 6x squared minus 2y squared all over y minus 8x squared y minus 8y cubed plus 4xy. But that doesn't really make it that much better. But that is something we could have done to make it so the numbers weren't as big, but it really doesn't make it um, that much simpler. Okay, woof, woof on that one. Take a second, see if you have any questions before we move on. Okay. Uh, let's uh, look at this example. Find the equation of the line tangent to the curve tangent of x plus y minus 1 equals xy plus 3x at the point 0, 1. So we have, we're finding a tangent line. We have the x and the y. We need the slope. Well, we're going to have to take this derivative. For this guy right here, you are using chain rule, right? The derivative of this guy is it's basically like you have tangent of stuff. So the derivative should be secant squared of leave this stuff alone times the derivative of whatever that stuff is. In this case, the stuff is x plus y minus 1. So it would stay the same here. And then the derivative of x plus y minus 1 is 1 plus dy dx plus 0, but I'm not going to put the plus 0. So let's write this out. We're taking the derivative. So the derivative of tangent x plus y minus 1 is secant squared of x plus y minus 1 times the derivative of x plus y minus 1, which is 1 plus dy dx, equals, on the other side, we have chain rule not chain rule, product rule. We have product rule. So our f is x, our f prime is 1, our g is y, and our g prime is dy dx. So f prime g 1 times y plus g prime f, so dy dx times x, 
and then plus 3x. So the derivative of 3x is 3. To get the dy at dx's together, we're going to need to distribute this secant to both of these so that we can get this dy dx by itself. So secant squared times 1 will just be secant squared x plus y minus 1 plus secant squared times dy dx will give us secant squared x plus y minus 1 dy dx. 1 times y is y. x times dy dx is x dy dx. And then that 3 will just come straight down. The dy dx terms are going to go on the left. Anything without a dy dx is going to go on the right. So this y can stay and this 3 can stay. So we have secant squared x plus y minus 1 dy dx minus x dy dx is equal to y plus 3 minus secant squared x plus y minus 1. Factoring out the dy dx, we have secant squared of x plus y minus 1 minus x equals y plus 3 minus secant squared of x plus y minus 1. So your dy dx is going to equal y plus 3 minus secant squared of x plus y minus 1 all over secant squared x plus y minus 1 minus x. We need to now evaluate this at the point 0, 1, so we can get the slope of the tangent line, right? Because we're trying to find a tangent line. We have x1, which is 0. We have y1, which is 1. And now to find the m, we're plugging in this point to our derivative. So I'm taking dy dx, and I'm evaluating it at x equals 0, y equals 1. So 1 plus 3 minus secant squared of 0 plus 1 minus 1, secant squared of 0 plus 1 minus 1 minus 0. As you can see, this is going to be secant squared of 0. I can write that out. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 minus secant squared of 0 over secant squared of 0. There is no button for secant squared on your calculator. There's no button for secant on your calculator. So how do you find out the value of secant squared of 0? Well, secant squared of 0, that's the same as secant of 0, and that quantity gets squared. And then secant, if you had me for trigonometry, I like to talk about soulmates. Secant soulmate is cosine. So secant is 1 over cosine. So this is 1 over cosine of 0 squared. So that's how you would you could put it in the calculator, or at this point you could also figure it out. Because cosine of 0 is 1. So this is 1 squared, which is just 1. So 4 minus 1 over 1, da 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 da, 3. <laughs> the slope is 3. <laughs> we get the slope from plugging the x and the y values into the derivative.
So now, using our formula for a line, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus 1 equals 3 times x minus 0. So y is going to equal 3x plus 1. is equal to 3x plus 1. Questions on this one here. So the process, once again, was taking the derivative, which took a lot of work, right? Took, took quite some work. We took the derivative, found the derivative. Whew. Once we had the derivative, we took the point that we were given, and we plugged in those x and y values to the derivative to give us the slope of the tangent line. And maybe I should label that. That right there is the slope of the tangent line. That's what happens when you plug in values to the derivative. You get slopes of the tangent line at that point. I need the word line there. Slope of the tangent line. And then we just plugged in our x, y, and m values to the point slope formula. So most of this problem was literally just getting that darn derivative down. Now here's a fun thing to mention. I wanted to find the derivative because I want us to practice finding these derivatives, but here's something fun. If you're not actually trying to find the equation for the derivative, you can be a little sneaky because we didn't really need to find dy dx here. So just something sneaky to mention. If I started here with this derivative, secant of x plus y minus one times one plus dy dx, equals y plus x dy dx plus 3. If I started here and I had the point, so I have the point 0 comma 1, right? So this guy's a 0, 1, 1, 0, If I had that point, and I, I just I could just kind of fill this in, so I'd have secant squared of 0 plus 1 minus 1 secant squared of 0 times 1 plus dy dx equals 1. The fact that x is 0 means this whole term doesn't even exist, plus 3. Secant squared of 0 is 1. So this is really just 1 plus dy dx equals 4. Subtract 1 on both sides, dy dx equals 3. Now, like I said, this is only something you can do in the particular case where you're looking for just a slope and you don't care about the equation, right? In most cases, you're going to be worried about finding the equation. In most cases, you're not finding the tangent line. You're finding just the derivative. But just worth noting that you could have avoided some of this tr trouble if you had just started right here and plugged in your values right away. It actually condenses all of that work into here. Again, only works if you're just finding the slope of the tangent line and you don't care about that derivative. Okay. So here's something else you can do. You can find second derivatives. Let's talk about how that process is going to look. To find a second derivative, 
you're going to start by finding a first derivative, just like we always have. Right? So if we have this function here, this first part is going to require chain rule. So f is x squared, f prime is 2x, g is y squared, and g prime is 2y dy dx. So our derivative, using product rule, f prime g, so 2x y squared times g prime f. I'm just going to go ahead and stick the x squared right in here because they're being multiplied. So plus 2x squared y dy dx minus, because now we have this part, minus 2. And then the derivative of 3 is 0. dy dx's can stay on the left. Non dy dx terms are going to move to the right. So we have 2x squared y dy dx equals 2 minus 2xy squared. Dividing by this guy right here. We have dy dx is equal to 2 minus 2xy squared over 2x squared y. Now, a suggestion I can give you when you're finding second derivatives is to simplify if at all possible. Because it'll make your life a little bit easier. So here, I notice that everything has a, has a 2 in it. So I can pull that 2 out. So I can pull a 2 out on top. 1 minus xy squared. And then I have 2x squared y. And I can cancel these 2s. So I have 1 minus xy squared over x squared y. How much room have I used up? We'll be okay. Um, so this really is one, the dy dx. One minus xy squared over x squared y. That's as simple as we can get it. I'm gonna box it, not because it's our answer, but because it's the first part of what we need. So we found dy dx. The next step, to get the second derivative, you have to take the derivative of dy dx. So if we're going to take the second derivative, we're going to take a derivative here, and we're taking a derivative here. This is going to get a little bit weird, all right? It's going to get a little, a little fancy. So step two, differentiate dy dx. Let's look at the anatomy of dy dx real quick. So we're going to need to use quotient rule, right, because we have a quotient. But additionally, inside each of the quotients is a product rule that needs to happen. So. We have f, we have g. And then when we go to do quotient, uh, to do product rule, you have two other functions that you're going to have to worry about. So 
So for f, f is 1 minus xy squared. To find f prime, you are doing product rule here. So the derivative of 1 is 0 minus, now we do product rule. So the derivative, so f prime g, right? Because like, it's like you have f and g again. f prime is 1 times g is y squared plus g prime 2y dy dx g prime times f, which is x. Simplifying that, you could distribute the negative. You'd have negative y squared minus 2xy dy dx. That is your f prime. Once again, this is f prime g and then g prime f. For g, we have x squared y. So this is also product rule. f prime is 2x times g is y plus g prime, so the derivative of y, is dy dx times f, which is x squared. So writing this a little nicer, 2xy plus x squared dy dx. We have all the pieces now. We have g, and we have f, f prime, g, and g prime. And now we need to use quotient rule. And if you remember, quotient rule, when you have the derivative of a quotient of two functions, it will be f prime g minus g prime f all over g squared. So we're taking, and once again, we're taking the derivative of dy dx. So this is actually our second derivative, d squared y dx squared is the notation. This is our second derivative, right? f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So f prime is this guy, negative y squared minus 2xy dy dx. f prime g, which is x squared y, minus g prime 2xy plus x squared dy dx all over g squared x squared y quantity squared. You're almost done. <laughs> You're almost there. Here's the last step. This is circular reasoning right here if you give this as an answer because then it's like, what's the, what's the second derivative? Oh, well, the second derivative contains first derivatives. Well, what's the first derivative? Oh, well, it's this. So what we need to do is we need to take this and plug it in for dy dx. So we need to remember we know what dy dx is. dy dx is 1 minus xy squared over x squared y. So every place where there's a dy dx, we need to replace it with the actual dy dx. And then we're done. So here it comes, our final answer, d squared y over dx squared is equal to negative y squared minus 2xy, 
Now, here's a dy dx, so we're going to replace that with the actual dy dx right here, parenthesis, 1 minus xy squared over x squared y. times x squared y, so that's this piece right here, minus 2xy plus x squared, once more, there's a dy dx, so parenthesis, 1 minus xy squared over x squared y, did I forget? Boop, oh, oh, boop, 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 what I forget here, um, did no one call me out on it? No one called me out on it. F prime G minus G prime, this is G prime, but I forgot F, so F goes over here, 1 minus X Y squared. So, 1 minus X Y squared all over dun, 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 x squared y quantity squared and you're done easy as that easy peasy <laughs> that was a joke th th that part was a joke um it's not easy peasy there's a lot going on here right th there's a lot going on but it is just step by step the most important thing is that you don't try to bite off too much at one time. If you start thinking about what's going to happen down here, right when you're up here, it's going to be a really bad time. Your first step is just finding dy dx, and you know that process. So use that process to find dy dx. Once you have dy dx, you're just taking this derivative again. So it's the same process, but you're taking it again. Sometimes that'll include some embedded product rule. No big deal, you've done product rule, just take it a step at a time, put it all together, and then replace your dy dx's with whatever it was that you got up here. And, and just don't simplify your answer. <laughs> so a lot of the calculus that gets, so somebody said, I'll never understand the practicality of calculus. Um, a lot of the things that get used, so if you're going into engineering in particular, a lot of this is building up the fundamentals, make, helping you understand how they're created, how they're used. But oftentimes a lot of the plug and chug in engineering ends up happening with computers. So it's sort of like, yes, we have calculators on us always, but we don't want to not teach our kindergartners how to add and subtract and multiply numbers, right? It's still important that they understand how to do that by hand, how, to, how, to, how numbers work. So this is the equivalent of me teaching you to add and subtract and multiply, even though you might, as an engineer later on, be using computers to do this math for you, it's under important to understand where it's all coming from and what the fundamentals are. Also makes you look real smart, right? Look at this. Super smart. You look at that and you're like, wow, incredible. Right. It's learning what the computers have to do. Right. So, so there's some stuff you'll have to do by hand, maybe. Maybe you'll have to do some checking of work. Um, a lot of it, no, I'm not an engineer. I'm going off of what my engineering friends have told me. Um, a lot of it is using computers to do the math for you and then understanding what those numbers do. The other thing about calculus is you're taking calculus so that when you apply for your programs, they know that you have the ability to think critically and to follow algorithms and to to work through things. When, when colleges are looking at you taking calculus, they're not really thinking, oh, that's great. They know how to do calculus. Therefore, they can become an engineer. They're thinking, oh, they took a really hard course and they did really well in a course that re that's hard that requires them to critically think, that requires them to work with things in an abstract way. A lot of calculus isn't necessarily the fact that you're learning this particular skill. It's the fact that you have the ability to learn this skill and that you can critically think and that later on you'll have vague ideas of what how it was constructed that will help you in using numbers and using the values that come out of calculus. So that's that's my TED talk. <laughs> um, 
So uh, other than that, I think that's all I have to lecture on today. I did post your exams. Um, so those are all posted so you can correct them and turn them back in. If there's any problem with the notations, so I made annotations on everything. If there's problems with the annotations, please let me know. It may take a second to load, but they should all be there. But let me know if they don't show up. Um, that's due next Monday. And like I said, I'm going to rethink our schedule a bit. I think I'm going to push the exam back a week because it would be next week, but I really don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it's time yet for that exam. Um, so I think I'm going to push the exam back. Um, somebody asked, do you want us to correct the test on the annotated test or print a new one and turn it in? Um, print a new one. So I put instructions on the exam redo assignment. So if you click on the exam redo assignment, it'll, it'll tell you what I want. Um, you can, you can do it on scrap paper and you can number the problems or you can print the pages you want to redo and circle the problems on there and redo those problems. And I want you to redo the full problem, not just the part you got wrong. So um, redo the entirety of the problem either scrap paper or printing on a new test, but do not write on the old one. Other questions at all? Okay. All right, well, if there are questions, I'll take them. I'll stay in until everybody leaves. Otherwise, I'm gonna end this recording and I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend.